wave to the millions and millions of people who are watching you over the internet. Coming over here to some of our other producers, Kira Cleveland. Hi, Vlad. Hey. Guys, what are you working on? We won't tell the competition, but this is where it happens. Some very important journalism. There you go. See, you thought you were going to hide back there, Nick, but not happening. And as I make my way over to our young broadcast associates, this is the hard work. This is where the hard work happens. <laughs> this is where the easy work happens. <laughs> our anchor, Elaine Keanu. <laughs> All right, I don't know if this worked. I'm sure there's people who are probably telling me I'm doing it all wrong, but that was a tour of the CBS newsroom using Meerkat. Okay, that was fun. That was our very own Vladimir Duthier giving you a tour of the CBS newsroom using the most talked about piece of technology at South by Southwest. It's called Meerkat. It's a live streaming app that you can use to stream anything from concerts to your night out at a restaurant, right from your iPhone or iPad. And users can tweet at you while you do that. Our newsroom had tons of questions. Here to help sort all of this out is CBS News legal analyst Ricky Cleveland. All right, so Ricky, I was telling you off camera, the alarm bells were sort of going off as we talked about this in our editorial meeting. What is the difference between this kind of technology, the Meerkat app, and, say, taking a photo or getting video with a traditional kind of camera? Well, obviously, technologically speaking, it's a simulcast. Um, and that's different than having the photo and then sending the photo or keeping the photo. Um, but the reality is, in terms of the law, which is my area of expertise, there is no difference. Um, that what you are doing is taking a picture, this time it's a moving picture, and it's in real time, and it would be treated legally the same as a photograph. So if I'm on a train, for instance, it's my commute home, I want to relax, and I think nobody's paying attention to me, I'm in my own little area there on the train, can someone get video of me? Is that considered... Legal? What, what's the issue? It is legal. Any place that you are at, including a train on your way to and from work, whether you're talking, whether you're sleeping, whether you're doing something perhaps that would be embarrassing to you, you are in a public place. So streaming that live is not an issue? It, well, it's not legally an issue. If someone wants to go stream you live, um, you know, scratching your ear uh, or snoring, that may be just too bad. That's why these type of apps really do alarm us because we do have this idea that we even when we're in a public place that somehow no one is watching or if they're watching they're certainly not broadcasting not so anymore can a person sell that video that they know if you are involved in doing something with the video that means that you are making a commercial profit. It is not that easy. You cannot do that. If they're just uploading it, well, they're just uploading it. So then, if you're the quote-unquote victim of having been on this Meerkat app, if uh, a site up it takes that and then puts it out there for the public, you have a right to ask that site to take it down. So, in most cases, by virtue of their policies, they will have some kind of conversation with you, whether it is a real conversation or whether it's an email conversation. <laughs> but they may well take it down. But that's your remedy. We're not talking about anything criminal here yet. Now, if someone wants to use this app and take a picture of you on the train and try to go up your skirt, that is, look at your private parts, whether they are covered or not. When you get to that level, there are state laws, not in every state, but there are many state laws that say, no, 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 you cannot do that. So if you get into the realm of private parts, sexual activity, things where you would see a part of a person's body that they would not otherwise be seen and they have an expe expectation of privacy, it would not be seen, then there's a problem. But other than that, everything is sort of fair game. If fair, ga fair game if it's public. Now, there are places you can go that are private. And in fact, we have looked at Mr. Durst. So there's a whole question of if you go into a bathroom, for example. Obviously, what you do in a bathroom is considered private. What you do in your own bedroom is considered private unless you consent to your loved one or yourself taking a video uh, of yourself and then uploading it. So there is a distinction between the place, the part of your body, and what your intention is about your privacy. But if you're out in the public, 
anything you do is there for consumption. So how does this live stream technology work when you're in a state where there's, say, two-party consent law? How does that work? Well, in, in a two-party consent law state, and what that means is that both parties must consent to electronic eavesdropping. So you have a better chance, if you're in a two-party consent state, of saying that your rights have been violated. Whether you succeed or not is still another matter. Let's go back to your train. You're on the train. Anything that you do or say is in the public. So the fact that someone is taping you, if they're not doing it surreptitiously, well, probably you're still out there for in the public domain. If they have a hidden camera um, in a place where you need to consent to electronic eavesdropping, you have some kind of an argument. Whether or not you'll succeed it remains to be seen. And it's why, again, the law has to catch up with technology. Let me take you one step further. You're on your train and you're whispering, really whispering something very private to the person next to you. That's your intent that although you are in a public place, you have an expectation of privacy in your whispering, and no one near you except that person's ear can hear you. But if somehow, with the app, you could get an amplification of that conversation, then I think you've got a better chance at having a cause of action. Okay, now here's another um, example that someone brought up. What if someone live streams a baseball game that's being broadcast, say, on ESPN or something? How does the law look at that? Well, I think that ESPN or other networks are going to be the people at the forefront of making sure that you cannot do that if, in fact, you are going to interfere with their business contractual relationship or if you're going to make a profit. Again, the law is following technology. Technology is leading the way. We can't keep up with it. I'll bet your bottom dollar that ESPN has been thinking of this one already. All right. Ricky Kleeman, a lot of legal issues to sort out. Fascinating discussion. Thank you so much for your insight. Thank you, Elaine.